Good evening again, and I'm sorry that I'm not here with the photo for Mrs. P. And again, because I don't have any presentation that's been uh, developed, so I'm sorry that the only thing that you just look is concept. So hopefully it's going to be interesting to you. Um, thank to my colleagues, actually they didn't leave any kind, let's say, I'm not going to talk about my race account because I think you have to give enough uh, lessons today. You know, having such uh, you know expert people in this uh, meeting room. But I will be talking uh, more specifically about the educational reforms in Qatar and how it helped and moved Qatar towards the economic diversification, uh, of course, to the knowledge-based economy in the last decade. Um, needless to mention that uh, Qatar is a small-sized uh, country. Uh, and it's just exactly as uh, Dr. Goldan mentioned uh, previously. Qatar is just exactly as the other GCC countries, Ukraine, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and others, in terms of its political, um, social, economic background. Um, but I would like to say that, um, to start with, is that Qatar is, is, is a rich country. So it was very logic that it would invest the returns of the oil and gas in building its human capital. Uh, basically, the, the, the uh, uh, it's people for education, uh, education itself. So it's invested a lot since the oil and gas revenues are starting, in, you know, to be a company or GDP and public economy. However, let's talk honestly. Um, it wasn't um, well planned and well implemented, as you know, being you know a hydrocarbon country or entire state, and all of these uh, controversial issues. Uh, didn't give Qatar as a leadership in a way that it will really direct and its investment in the right proper way in terms of investing heavily in its people towards the future where suddenly they will wake up and there will be no more oil and gas. Um, but let's let's I mean let's go back by the mid 1990s where Qatar leadership recognized very strongly that without taking the right action in the right times it would be so late for them to think at later stage. So the, the Qatar leadership in the mid 1990s, they started taking um, a very uh, good decision by reforming its education. Um, and the kind of the approach they have, I mean, they, they've been taken, they've been approaching uh, in um, reforming the education was a mix of traditional and innovative approaches in a way that it started by reforming the local Educational in, in Qatar, however, by uh, attracting more international branches and at the same time by contracting or getting the best consultants, you would like to say, uh, you know, those who can participate in reforming the education as per the, for example, international standards being developed by the World Bank, by the OECD, and um, many other uh, institutional, uh, sorry, academic uh, and, and international organizations. Um, let's let's talk first about the mid 1995, where a new institution uh, was established in Qatar. Qatar uh, Foundation. I, although I'm sure that you had you know uh, read uh, something about this institution, Qatar uh, Foundation for Education, Science, and Community Development. Um, that approach, the Qatar the QF uh, uh, approach, was basically depending on attracting international, basically uh, American. Uh, European, uh, well known and well recognized uh, universities to, to, to Qatar. They started by uh, the Virginia Commonwealth for graphic design and interior design, um, and they ended by, till today, by nine international universities, including White Cornell for medicine, Texas A&M for engineering, um, Georgetown uh, for international affairs, um, uh, Carnegie Mellon for business and information system. I not forgetting anything. Uh, I mean, today we have UCL. Not, sorry? UCL? Yeah, UCL. So well. Yeah, yeah, and UCL. And the, no, no, the, the third one was taken by Abu Dhabi. Um, the uh, the HEEC for uh, business uh, and yeah. Uh, mixed. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so that was the beginning in 1995. Uh, and all those universities today, uh, uh, in addition to so its new system, which called Hamad al Khalifa University, that uh, also operates four, uh, four schools, uh, the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, the School of Public uh, Policy and Law, 
uh, the school, I think, of, uh, no, sorry, the, the Center of Sustainable Development, and there's also a Center for Engineering and ICT, um, which all offers bachelor, master, and uh, PhD uh, degrees. On the other hand, talking about the Qatar, the only Qatar National uh, University, which is Qatar University, is the biggest and the oldest. Um, its reform started in, in the mid-2003. Now, before 2003, uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar in general was suffering as many other GCC and maybe the whole MENA countries in terms of um, talking back about the divorce. The divorce between the educational institutions and the labor market, where unfortunately uh, both spouses are, you know, husband and wife working their own direction without, you know, connecting to each other. So that was exactly the same situation in Qatar, where the educational outcomes coming from QU, Qatar University, is not helping at all or not even of any kind of benefit to the labor market in terms of the skills we are looking for, they are looking for. Um, and the kind of talents they are, they are uh, uh, wishing to have. So by 2003, uh, Qatar leadership, uh, uh, presenting the person in his highness Sheikh Tamim, because he used to supervise directly Qatar University, uh, uh, he, uh, he started uh, a Qatar University reform project that lasted from 2003 to 2008. By this reform, the main objectives was is not only to end by having uh, graduates that will meet the labor market and knowledge-based economy, but more significantly, that it will be based on international standards. And uh, that's why by 2014, even 15, many programs in Qatar University, including science, statistics, uh, uh, business, finance, economic development, uh, biology, uh, physics, and journalism, they were internationally accredited. Um, the thing that I have to focus here with another university, because it is the only national and the biggest and the oldest uh, university in the, in, the, in the country, it attracts not less than 70% of the high school graduates. So we cannot compare it to Qatar Education, uh, Qatar Foundation, Education City, and Hamad al Khalifa. Not, not in terms of the enrollment, because at QU is still the highest, much, much highest. Uh, uh, it's, it's usually enrolled and the graduate not less than between 50 to 70 of the, uh, I'm talking basically about the Qatari uh, uh, students, compared to less, uh, sorry, to between 20 to 30 percent, uh, even in terms of enrollment all in terms of the graduates within other foundation. And maybe one of the reasons is that the admission uh, uh, requirements at Qatar, you know, Qatar uh, Foundation and Hamad al-Khalifa University is very high and it is just exactly as close to one and their uh, campus international uh, um, uh, compared to Qatar University, even though of their fall, but, but it is much less um, um, compared to, to education. Now, um, in terms of the uh, research and development that's been mentioned and focused a lot while talking about knowledge-based economy. Again, um, when Qatar launched, it's Qatar, uh, they launched uh, Qatar the National Vision to 2030 and 2008, one of the main pillars was focusing on is human development in addition to the economic development, of course, including the diversification of this economy and, of course, moving forward to the knowledge-based economy. One of the main targets that was focused within the Qatar National Vision, or actually the first strategic plan of Qatar 2011-2016, is increasing the number of Qatari graduates with knowledge-based specialization in order to be a uh, knowledge workers. That, uh, that, target, uh, that target, actually, I think it was 56 or something like this. Today, as for today's statistics, 67 of Qatari graduates, whether from Hulu or the Education City, or even from those uh, you know, uh, graduated uh, abroad, uh, they are equipped with knowledge uh, specialization, reaching 67% of today's graduates, and 63% uh, of other laborers are uh, in uh, either a knowledge specialization or being classified as knowledge workers. Now, I'm not going to talk about what is knowledge workers or what is knowledge specialization, but I have to mention something that the other, uh, the first tra strategy, uh, they listed what kind of specialization they need to focus on during the coming years, year, 10 years, in order to classify those uh, students or other students as knowledge uh, workers in the future. 
they meant that maybe there was a lot of focus on science, including engineering, medicine, um, IT definitely, but also there was a lot of, fo uh, a lot of focus on other uh, yeah, um, uh, soci uh, social and the humanities, including, for example, economic development, business finance and accounting, and so on. So as per today's statistics, yes, we did reach the 67% the, the that was even tar targeted as, you know, as knowledge workers. Now, um, when it comes to research and development, um, Qatar also invested heavily, taking into account that they have to utilize the money of the oil and gas, otherwise uh, uh, such opportunity will not be available in the next uh, few decades. So they inv invested very heavily in research and development, and that was by uh, 2005, by the establishment of Qatar Science Technology. Uh, zone Park, uh, that's followed by Qatar National Research uh, Fund, which uh, encouraged a lot the, uh, the research uh, among not only the professors and the I mean, uh, academics and researchers in the, in the academic institution, but also in the industry. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, it was also targeting the high school students and of course the, the university students. So uh, today it has many programs, including the high school, the uh, university, as well as the professors and uh, researchers that is related directly to institutions. And it was really successful during the last five years in doing its job in a way that it has spent more than $300 million on research that was really um, actively participating in developing, more specifically in the industry, um, uh, in the industry itself. Uh, QU was the major uh, contributor and the, and the major also benefit from this uh, research grants so where they, 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 they received uh, more than 70% of uh, such uh, research and development allocated on an annual basis by other national research fund. Now, one of the issues that we discussed in, in this uh, session, uh, sorry, in this meeting is that the gender gap, as Dr. Amir said, um, uh, well, I can tell you that even, you know, I would say Qatar University, because it is the only major university in Qatar and it is, um, attracts 70% of the Qatari females due to many social uh, aspects, uh, Qatari females actually progressed very uh, quickly in the last decade in terms of, education, uh, uh, of their educational enrollment, always the highest percentage compared to the Qatari female, uh, males. Uh, in terms of educational attainment, uh, not less than 70% are with uh, university and postgraduate studies. Uh, and even in terms of their participation to the labor market, when increased over the last two decades, um, to the extent it's not only about the percentage, 70%, but also in more leadership and even professional uh, of, uh, positions, including the engineering and the ICT industries. Um, um, what I would like to mention that even the picture is so rosy as you might think, however, we are, by the end of the day, um, a country that faces a lot of the challenges that are just facing in your countries and in the MENA and in the region in general. One of the uh, uh, basic challenges we are still facing is that the KG-212 education, even though it was done through a reform over the last decade. But because it wasn't, it was a planned well, but it wasn't implemented in the right way as it was uh, planned, um, it didn't really give the, the, the link, or sorry, not the link, the kind of requirements needed by the reforms done at QU and Education City itself, where the high school or the KG to 12 graduates uh, as an, in, as an input were not, you know, as the same standard as required by the higher education institute, uh, institutions and other. And that's why um, the country was required uh, or finds itself in more investment, you know, in bridging the gap between the higher education, between the high school and between the higher education. So, you know, having a lot of academic bridge foundation uh, programs that will link such a gap. So this is one of the major uh, challenges we are still facing till today, and I think, at least this is my personal observation, I think we will still keep uh, facing such a challenge, at least in, in this uh, decade. 
Now, in addition to QU and Qatar Foundation, we have a lot of other universities in, in Qatar, including the military, um, the Calgary uh, for nursing and health sciences. We have the North Atlantic, again, focused a lot in ICT and, and uh, technologies and industries. Uh, we have also the uh, the Qatar Leadership Center, which uh, which is a transition between employment, between between uh, uh, university and employment, where after two or three years of employment, any Qatari uh, can go to join this program to increase and enhance their leadership. We have also a lot of research centers that focus on sustainable development and technology, basically the engineering and the ICT and how it will help in improving the, the quality and output of the industries uh, in, in the country. Uh, again, I would believe that one of the challenges is that not only just reforming the KG to 12, but also the communication, because uh, I can't remember one of uh, the speakers mentioned something about connecting and co cooperating uh, these centered efforts, um, because, uh, you know, uh, education is it's a pink tank, but by the end of the day, if the, I think the Dr. Fawzan said, if the, uh, the outcomes of such a great, uh, academic institutions were not invested uh, properly by the industry or by the labor market, then it would be a lost investment because it will not really get the, the, the right rate of return as it was expected and uh, it planned. So Qatar uh, is a governmental, by the way, uh, driven education, uh, but I would believe it is a unique case in a way um, it was driven in the last decade in a proper way, even though we have some good results in terms of educational outcomes, in terms of knowledge-based uh, economy. And by the way, knowledge-based economy in Qatar has been driven not only of course by education, even though it's the main parameter, however, there's a lot of focus on international investment, uh, the SMEs, uh, the, uh, the petrochemical and chemical industry, the banking and, and, and finance, uh, and so many issues. But as we all agree, being an academics and researchers, again, education would remain the main factor in driving and knowledge based economy. Thank you, and hopefully, it was enough for you to understand the whole case. Yeah, thank you. Please remember if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.